Now in Audible we have these huge uh, scale apartment uh, type buildings. Um, we also have other uh, like key roofed, um, very simple structures that you find in much of the forest. And I think we wanted to try and find a middle ground that it's not an extravagantly uh, built building that uses a lot of um, yeah unsustainable materials, but also that it's not so um, uh, not so simple that somehow um, not many people can also uh, choose to live in it. You know, so something a little bit more comfortable, um, but also cost effective, but also um, sustainable uh, as much as it can be. So this sort of middle ground, and at the same time also play with design, like really shape it to our needs, you know. So um, I think something like this is, has been, uh, we've heard that it's quite fresh for many people because there's no longer so many opportunities for experimentation with housing in this, in this same way. So I feel very grateful to have had this opportunity. This house is called Queendom, a little play on the words kingdom. It's wonderful. I enjoy the, the whole thing, the endeavour. And I like the, the little decisions, actually, is what I enjoy about it. The, the, the tiles in the mud, uh, the, the stained glass windows, uh, you know, the personalised um, details. I, I would hope that more people would look at it and think, oh, I would like to build one like that, you know, sort of thing. And, um, but, whether that sort of construction is, is going to be eventually encouraged in Oregon or not, only time will tell. So the house took, I think, approximately six months to, to build from start to finish. The first and foremost need was demountability um, because we are part of the Joy of Impermanence project, which means all houses are theoretically movable uh, from the land. We wanted a structure that would sit on very light foundations. We initially went to Johnny from Fertile um, because we really liked um, the demountability of the structures that he'd been working on. I don't see my role as being in, uh, to, as designing houses. What I um, would like to feel is that I could come up with a system that allows people to more or less design their own houses. Perumal uh, is, uh, was our contractor. Uh, he had worked with Johnny for many years, so he was really somebody who made his designs come to life. He's very creative and is a, he's, a, he's a solutions guy. But I never like to say, oh, it's not possible, you know. It is everything possible. That is my game. Nor will they want more like a simple and low cost housing. And now Nor will maybe with Johnny model houses, we did like a 25 to 30 houses. We had also worked with another architect in Oroville um, called Omar, who was kind enough to, to sort of help us think through some of the possibilities of what this house could be. Uh, so with him, we really worked on some of the bioclimatic aspects um, of what could be an intelligent design. The foundations being off the ground is, some, is something that, it's a technique that's uh, used by Johnny and actually a few uh, Oroville architects um, because it's uh, useful for um, termites, which are a huge issue here in terms of construction, especially natural construction, um, that they can be very damaging to wood and other materials that they love to eat. Uh, the structure in terms of portability, in terms of longevity, um, we, we decided on uh, using steel frames after conversations with various uh, Oravillians around uh, cost, time, energy uh, and efficiency. Um, but we wanted the house to be as filled with as many natural materials as possible. 
So um, it was a sort of finding the balance between practicality as well as um, our needs to sort of feel uh, less enclosed in a cement box. And the reason I stick to a steel frame really is that is that it's it's um, it's cyclone proof. Once you've got a steel frame, then you do the rest as much as you can with with uh, natural materials. But this one is a little bit kind of luxury house, I can say. But uh, this one we made a little bit different than other houses. So it's mostly all bracket welded, like also in the main post, we welded a smaller pipe inside the fits this pipe. It's like sleeve, pushing goes inside. So in future you can just lift up. No bolt, nothing, just you can lift up the pipe up. That's it. We came up with a compromise, a steel structure with a, a roof that was also an insulated sandwich panel roof, which is very extremely uh, light, um, is very effective in insulating the house from the, the heat, um, as well as being cost effective. The panels that form the walls of the house are a mixture of wood and wattle and daub. Our wattle and daub technique was taught to us by um, a mentor, uh, Arul, who worked in Pichandikulam Forest. He used this technique before of weaving um, uh, something called the Isamaram, which is a, a wild date tree that you, you find around here. We were around bamboo frames and it forms this beautiful um, structure over which uh, you can put um, mud and the mixture that you make for the wattle and daub, which contains uh, cow dung, cow urine, um, sand, um, mud. Um, and also we added uh, kadukai, which is Terminalia chibula, I think, um, which had been experimented with by Arul, who recommended it in terms of adding an additional element to uh, waterproof. We really, really um, thought about how this house could be as uh, bioclimatically um, suited uh, for this kind of area as possible. So to be clever in the use of materials. Uh, and louvers are, are really great, which we've learned from many uh, pioneering Aurobillians who, 
who told us that this kind of um, yeah this kind of element really sucks in um, air from the outside and keeps um, keeps the the room cool. Louvers are great, and louvers um, because they um, not only bring in the wind is what I enjoy, but they also bring in uh, at night they bring in the night sound. The stairs actually are a funny story because we had them before we actually got the house. It was built by one of our friends, Ilango, from the Trias community for another for, for another building. And uh, when they uh, left the place, they 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 wanted to give the stairs a new home. And uh, we said, okay, we'll take them. Um, so they they're uh, made completely of wood, um, sort of rummaged and found from the forest that he sort of really beautifully just worked on. Um, to give it its organic shape, so we call them the conscious stairs because uh, it's a little bit steep uh, in certain places. First step, we need to remove all the electric lines, the wall panels. It's all like a, like eight places screwed in the to the frame into the pipe. I'm also, I mean, if they want the glass, we also separately fixed the windows. We can remove the windows, then the panels, then the floor, and the roof, and the structure, and the foundation. Then. This client, this, they're more involved in the house. They're always coming and checking. They're doing a work with us, and they actually the whole house they're painting the wool color like a rainbow. They're choosing the color. And they also did the mud wall. Actually, they got more friends and they're helping them. Really, they enjoying the work, and also they got a lot of experience with the, doing it. They're more enjoying it. Also, we are happy to working with them. I think in terms of creating closed loops for sustainability, we have a rainwater guttering uh, put in, which harvests uh, the rainwater in tanks that are located nearby. Um, our wastewater from the kitchen, we collect in a, in a bucket and pour to our plants directly. Um, we have uh, solar panels, so um, we're off the grid. I think overall we had about 50 or 60 volunteers at least come through to help us uh, in various stages, whether it was um, doing the wattle and daub, or like even we had, I think, 15 people help us just putting up the roof, you know? So it's seen a lot of help, without which it would not have taken the shape it, it had. I've never built a house before. I think for me, the biggest learning was about uh, the process of how it took shape. It's not a house that we, knew what it was going to look like when we started, you know? So that, that trust and sort of um, to work from intuition a little bit um, is my biggest learning. I really love living here. Um, I think it's really a special feeling living in a space that uh, you helped build or design. Um, so, and it's a constantly um, evolving, um, changing space according to our needs. Um, so it's really, yeah, I feel like I really know every corner of this house, which is a very special feeling to, to be part of it. <laughs>